Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And um, in this video, I am going to show you uh, the primitive objects that Blender comes with and they're easy to do, what they are, and how to model them or how to create them. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a brand new scene, in fact. Let's uh, create a brand new scene. And that, there it is. I'm going to hide the light. I'm going to hide the camera. And I'm even going to hide this 3D cursor. Just so we can get a brand new scene. I'm going to delete the default cube. And I am going to show you where all these primitive objects are. Now these primitive objects are very, very important. Because you can start modeling just using primitive objects. Uh, and I'll show you a very, very good example. Uh, of how quickly you can start modeling. Um, in the object mode, go to the add menu and the, it's right there, mesh. And these are the primitive polygon objects. So we're gonna start with a plane and it's just a polygon, a flat polygon. And we're just gonna move it out of the way and continue with the cube. There's our cube. Circle. It's just a circle. It doesn't even have a face. It doesn't even have a face. Um, it's got no geometry except for the for the outside. Another keyboard shortcut is Shift A. Uh, and that's the Add menu. And let's go to UV Sphere. This is the default UV sphere. It's a polygon sphere with some triangles but mostly quads. That means four-sided polygons. Uh, because the next one is the icosphere. And this icosphere is made out of uh, mostly triangles. In fact, all triangles. You can see them there. That's the difference between the UV sphere and the icosphere. Let's continue. Let's move this one all the way out here. Cylinder, very, very useful. It's got a lot of uses. And cone, torus, don't call it a donut, it's a torus. Shift A, a grid. Uh, which is the same as this, but it's different. And I'll show you the differences. And the last object is, of course, the monkey. And this is like the, the default modeled primitive object. All right, cool. Those are all the primitive objects. Again, we've got the plane, the cube, the circle, the UV sphere, the torus, the cone, the cylinder, and the icosphere, plus the grid. The difference between the grid and the plane is that the grid has more geometry. If we go to wireframe, you can see that the grid has a bunch of geometry while the plane is just one polygon. Now what I'd like to show you uh, other than these is the uh, what I like to call the the interactive primitive tool. When when I go to and I click on whatever, let's say the cube it automatically boop, appears there and it's got a default size. I'm going to delete that one. But here, let me turn this back on. But interactive mode, let's say the cube, click on it and you get this highlighted area. I'm going to push this back and then you can start drawing right on the grid. And then you let go and it's still active and you can start uh, drawing up and there's a cube uh, what else is there cone well the cone again you can start drawing and then up boom there's a cone and then just click and hold add a cylinder interactively just uh, draw the base and then the height boom there's a cylinder and a UV sphere, again, the base and then the height, and there's a UV sphere, and an icosphere. 
the base. If you hold down the shift, it'll draw a perfectly round base. Let go, hold the, hold the shift and it'll, you can't, it'll draw a perfectly symmetrical sphere. Let go and then there it is. And so these were created interactively as I wanted. For example, if I go back to the cube and if I want a long skinny cube for a wall, there it is. Uh, plus, what, what I like about this is that, get this, it'll draw on any plane. Let's say we want to draw a, another cube on top of this one. Let go. Boom, there it is. Uh, and on the sides. Boom, there it is. Uh, on any on any um, um, on any surface so that's what's cool about this interactive tool uh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, when you draw something out I'm going to move this torus out of the way because I am going to create another cylinder. And there it is, there's my cylinder. Uh, but on this one, I'd like to show you guys that this menu down here, if you click on it, open it, reveal it, you get some options. And this cylinder, you can manipulate the, the sides, how many sides you want, as little as three, and as many as you want to make it completely smooth. See how this one has 32 sides and this one has a 154, a lot smoother. But let's go take it down, you can type it. Let's go take it down to five. And then the radius is how big you want it. And the depth is how high you want it. And then plus, Plus, you've got these also where you can actually move it in, in the X and the Y and the Z and then rotate it. You can rotate it also. And that's before you even create it. You've got these creation tools that will help you build this object the way you want it. And this appears for every single object. Once you click off of it, you cannot get it back. That's it. You lost it. It's only on the creation and then boom, it's lost. For example, I'm going to create a, I'm going to go to shift A and create a torus. You, you can see that you've got a, a different properties. Uh, the segments is this way. Let me zoom in. Uh, around. You can see how you can start making cool looking shapes and this is the uh, segments around see that cool looking UFO shape from a torus anyways uh, you can give it as many segments as you want and then this is it's too skinny for to be a donut so if you want to make it uh, bigger and thicker however you like your donuts. And, and again, you can give it more um, geometry to your heart content. And again, you can move it uh, wherever you want, even rotate it right before you create it. Again, once you click off of it, it's gone forever. Boop. This menu is gone forever and you can't get it back. But uh, there it is. I mean, we created, uh, it's almost like the interactive tool here, but I just love how this works. A and you interactively create that and you still have the options here. Hey guys, I hope that this lesson has been helpful to you. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thank you guys.